the government's scientific advisers have released their guidance underpinning controversial plans for primary schools in England to reopen for some pupils on June the 1st. Now, it suggests on the balance of evidence that children are less vulnerable to infection. The group also said that teachers don't appear to be at a greater risk than other professions and an effective track and trace system needs to be in place before schools in England can fully reopen. Now, the advice comes as the number of deaths reported in the last 24 hours has gone up by 351. That takes the overall total in the UK to 36,393. Our education editor, Branwyn Jeffries, has the very latest on the government's plans for some schools to reopen. Helping families on this estate in Leeds. Food, not lessons needed now. For parents like Daniel with three kids to feed. There you go. Enjoy. Thank you. All right, no he won't be sending his six-year-old back in June. I understand where they're coming from, but I generally just can't take that risk. I don't want it spreading further than it has to be spread. So it's safer for my own child and other children if I keep him off. As families loaded up, some with older children worried about lessons missed. The year 10s, I think, need to go back, but I think the primary school, I think they're too young to be able to, to not get them to interact. If parents here were looking for greater certainty, today's inconclusive advice won't provide it. Evidence weakest on how much children pass the virus on. We're looking at all the other areas where the R rate is still rising. At this primary school, few parents feel confident to return. In year six out of 46 parents, we had nine that were willing to send the children back into school. In year one, we only had one out of 60 parents that were willing to send the children in. And in reception, we had nobody. And teachers unions said tonight there's still too much doubt. Nobody wants to get back to school more than I do and more than thousands of other head teachers around the country. But we've got to make sure it's safe for the staff and safe for the children before we do so. The science around this new virus is still emerging and teachers and parents know that. While in England, children are due to start coming back in June, Scotland and Northern Ireland, based on the same science, have said they'll be waiting until August. I miss my job, I miss being in the classroom with the children. This reception class would be stripped back before any return. The scientific models rely on good hygiene. I think that it is good that they are looking into the science, but I think that that only goes so far. You know, it's still quite a new virus, and really, how much do we really know about it? I don't think that there's been a long enough time period. And I think, you know, speaking to teachers and people who actually work in schools is probably equally as important. With all these questions, it's clear. Decisions will end up being local. Ultimately, it will be for the schools to decide whether they are ready for this and whether parents uh, have confidence that they will send the children back. For every child in class now, millions more missing out on learning, on the safety of school, another risk to be weighed before any return. Bramman Jeffries, BBC News, Leeds. So, if and when schools do reopen, what risks could there be for children, teachers, families and the wider community? Our science editor, David Shukman, has this analysis. The vast majority of children generally don't suffer from the virus. That's the good news. But their role in spreading it is one of the most difficult issues to understand. First, what's the risk to children themselves of becoming infected? Well, it's not totally clear and that's highlighted in the latest documents from the scientists advising the government. Some research says children get the virus as easily as adults. Other studies say that's less likely. And that's the conclusion of a major analysis just published. We found that children and young people were around half as likely as adults to catch this virus from someone who's infective. That's very important because you can't pass it on if you don't catch it. This tells us that overall, as a group, children play a lesser role in transmission. So what's the risk to staff at schools of being infected by children? Well, the latest records for teaching staff dying of the virus in England and Wales show that for every 100,000 people, 6.7 male teaching staff lost their lives and 3.3 female. 
both these figures are lower than the average. For everyone of working age, it was 9.9 .9 males dying and 5.2 females. But it's one thing to have official figures, quite another to deal with the reality of school life when the gates eventually reopen. The government's scientific advisers say the dangers to staff should be no greater than for anyone else, provided there's social distancing and good hand hygiene. But they do admit the evidence is inconclusive about how much children can pass the virus on. So what's the risk to families and the community from children spreading the virus? If they return to their classrooms and get infected, they could pass it back home to elderly or vulnerable people. The advisory panel warns of consequences beyond the school gates. At today's government briefing, the chief scientific advisor said the concern was raising the infection rate, what's called the R number. The broader risk in terms of opening schools is that as soon as you start to reintroduce any contact, then you put some pressure on the R and you put pressure on numbers, and that's true for anything that we're going to do in terms of uh, changes to um, contact. Some primary schools have got going again in France. Temperatures are checked and children are kept apart. These are very cautious moves because, as the UK's advisers are saying, everyone needs to be convinced that this is safe. David Shukman, BBC News. Our health editor, Hugh Pym, is here. Hugh, we're told schools, uh, in order to get back, they need a good track and trace system in place, and we've been getting more details on that. Yes, Clive. The government said that in England, the new testing and tracing and tracking system will be up and running in early June, and a bit of it's become clear today. If someone tests positive, then officials will get in touch with their recent contacts by phone, and depending on the risk involved, will tell them they've got to self-isolate for 14 days, and people may feel that's rather firmer guidance than before. And Matt Hancock, the Health Secretary, writing in the Evening Standard, says everyone has a part to play in this. If lockdown restrictions are to be further eased, people have to go along with this self-isolation if they're told to by officials. Now, all this on a day when there was further discussion about the controversial decision to suspend testing and tracing back in March. Officials have been criticised for that happening. Today, two leading figures at Public Health England were giving evidence to a common select committee, and they said it had become impossible to carry on with contact tracing at the time because there were so many cases. They're expecting a million cases. They fed their advice into the SAGE Advisory Committee, which came up with a recommendation to stop testing and tracing, focus more on testing in hospitals. But ultimately, it was the government who'd made the final decision. Sure. OK. Hugh, many thanks. Hugh Pim there.